Orient Cement Limited Q3FY24 Result Earning Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harsh Mittal from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, dear. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I welcome you all to the Q3 FY24 earnings call of Orient Cement Limited. From the management, we have with us MD and CEO Sri Desh Deepak Khetrapal. So, without any further ado, I hand over the call to Mr. Khetrapal for his opening comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Arsh. And uh, a very, very warm welcome, welcome to all the participants in this call. And as usual, uh, uh, I'm grateful to all of you that you show interest in our company and spare time for coming on this call. Uh, I know we are, we are a few minutes behind, but uh, we were waiting for more people to join the call, so here we are. Uh, I mean, I, I know the participants on this call are all uh, interested people and who do their homework pretty well. Uh, but still, I'll give you a little bit of summary, uh, as you would have seen. Uh, we're happy with the, I would say, the profitability results that we've been able to put together, 117 crores of the uh, I'm touching about 140, sorry, 840 rupees per ton. And this is where so we, we said we would want to be uh, at the end of the year as well. Uh, we, I think uh, some of the concern that people may have had, uh, and I'm, I'm saying may have had because internally we at Orient Cement also are a a little bit disappointed with the degrowth in volumes that uh, we have uh, recorded in Q3. Uh, but I'll, I'll just give you a perspective on uh, uh, the what we think has happened in Q3. Uh, our disappointment aside, but the fact of the matter is that uh, in Q3, there are several things that have happened in the industry. Uh, more importantly, uh, in our home states, uh, which uh, home states move with two very important states, which is Telangana and Madhya Pradesh. We had elections that obviously created too much of a slowdown when the labor and people just disappeared. Uh, you know what happens when the state elections happen. So that was one of the main reasons. Besides that, obviously, the festivals in this quarter and also the Maratha agitation in some parts of Maharashtra. Uh, the, for the first time, we saw construction activity being and multiple bans being placed on uh, the uh, cement and concrete, act concrete activity in um, both Mumbai and Pune. So multi, multiple reasons uh, are there. Uh, one of the most important I, 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 I should point out is also that despite our degrowth, when I look at the uh, YTD growth numbers that have come out from DPIIT, they came just a few days ago. Uh, when we see we, uh, uh, YTD, we have a growth of about 9%. It seems to be completely in line with the growth of the rest of the industry in India. Because that's the only reliable data available. So while uh, we do believe we should have done better, but it doesn't seem that uh, we've actually uh, lost in terms of uh, the growth that the industry is recording and we have already grown. So uh, in fact, if you look at the data, the data also shows that uh, up to November, the growth of the industry, I'm talking about YTB, was uh, about 10%. Uh, and up to November, we also had a growth, uh, which was in excess of already 11%. In the month of December, if you see the numbers, uh, the, it, 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 the growth rate has come down very significantly, and that's where I think we also have a little bit. At, at the end of November, we were looking at 11% growth, uh, YTD, YOY. So I just thought I'll, I'll bring that up to you. The other matter of concern basically has been uh, in our state of Telangana, uh, which, as you people know, is a very, very important. It's not the largest state for our sales, but it's still a very, very important state for us. So that is. Uh, smaller market, but our home market. And uh, in that, uh, the B2C sales have been extremely slow in this quarter. Uh, the trade sales are the jargon goes in the, in the industry. And uh, obviously, first it was the election, then it was the change of government. Uh, so a lot of uncertainty there where lots of changes are being made in the administration, the officials. And things are uh, not sort of uh, uh, getting to go as they would with the stable government. 
uh, with no demand and uh, too many players actually getting aggressive in Telangana, uh, we are surprised as to how many players in Telangana are beginning to offer prices which quite frankly surprise us. I, I, I don't want to name them, but a few people do your research, you'll find that some of the topmost brands who've enjoyed premium uh, for a long, long time in the markets because of the brand equity. In Telangana markets, we have seen them selling, not just quoting, selling at about 20 rupees less per bag than our price of the live on cement. Now, that is, that is something which uh, uh, obviously puts pressure on us also, but uh, given our strategy of uh, staying with the right pricing and also pushing more and more of uh, premium cement in the market, you would have seen that uh, our uh, realization pattern, very close to 5,400 rupees, is uh, in some way in contrast to what we are seeing as realization being reported by many other players, which uh, I think is carrying on um, and sustaining the strategy that we've had. But I just thought I'll point out to you that uh, despite lower prices from very big brands, uh, we are not succumbing to the pressure. As a result of that, the pain has come our way. And uh, just to give you one data point, the B2C volumes in Telangana in Q3 for us are actually lower by 29%. That's a huge, huge hit. Uh, we Are we happy um, we're going at 29% in our home state? Certainly not. But the options are you compromise in price and start selling cheap, uh, which as a strategy as of now, at least we've not, we not sort of thought that it's, it's prudent for us to do that. So I, I thought I'd just table that. Even even in our largest market, by volume, we sell 60% of the whereabouts in the Maharashtra market. Uh, and as we know, that's our most important market. There again, uh, I think the major growth in demand continues to come from uh, the, the what we call the B2B, the non-trade segment. And uh, they largely buy OPC cement. And uh, in that market, again, you know, because the growth is coming to infra, uh, we have actually been growing well. Uh, the only problem that is there is that in that state also, in B2C, there has been degrowth. So B2C sales degrowing is uh, yeah, a worrying sign for us because that means not just the segment change, it also means the product mix change, and that keeps getting adverse. <laughs> and uh, uh, when you sell so much more OPC, you know the pressure it creates on, on, on companies. So in terms of, uh, so that was a little bit qualitative feedback or, or uh, inputs on the uh, on the volumes that we had. But overall volumes, as you people would have seen, we ended up at 13.92 lakh tons, uh, a degrowth of 3% uh, over last year and 2% over the previous quarter. Uh, YTD, as I mentioned, the sales have been 44 lakh tons and up about 9% over last year YTD. Again, as I mentioned, in line with the industry. The, Pressure of, let's say, demand growth that we, uh, we've we seen coming from the B2B sales has resulted in our total B2B sales in this quarter actually going up to as high as 56%, uh, which is something that we would like to correct as Telangana consumer demand picks up and as Maharashtra consumer demand picks up, we hope, uh, even if it doesn't happen in this current quarter, but uh, sooner than later, I think this trend needs to reverse. So this is this is not a trend that we would like to pursue. But as of now, uh, Q3 we had 56% of our volumes coming from B2B. Uh, as a product mix, uh, our OPC, that is unblended cement versus blended cement, has reached a higher 50% in the quarter. So I thought that because all of you remain a little bit uh, curious about how that breakup is. So non-trade 56%. OPC 50%, balance obviously is our trade sales. Uh, the, in all this, I think the, the good news is uh, the consistently growing share of our premium brands. And uh, we now comfortably, as far as we're crossing 20%, 21%, 22%, that range, we are selling our uh, premium segments, including initially we used to talk about only strong treat now. Uh, Orient Green is beginning to chip in, and the Dolphin is still to, like I said, find volumes worth mentioning, but uh, any consumer who's actually used our uh, Dolphin brand, they are actually the people who start with only the basement or only the smoking slowly, gradually start coming back for other users also. So that product, again, is uh, being received exceedingly well by the user customers, and as happened with Strong Treat and as happened with Orient Green, uh, basically we rely on word of mouth 
uh, from our existing users to build our market share. Exactly the same strategy that we've had uh, from the day we introduced the first premium brand, which is concrete. So we will we'll go slow, but go steady, and keep charging the price that we believe our, our product actually deserves. Uh, as a result of that, uh, despite, uh, as I mentioned, the degrowth in volumes, uh, the, if we say our revenue, they actually improved. We are 3% higher uh, uh, year on year and 4% higher uh, QOQ, which is, as I said, uh, the, the higher blended realizations coming in because of premium summons uh, helping us a lot. The, I mean, as I mentioned that the realization of the 5,400 part in this quarter is 5% uh, uh, up year on year and 7% uh, quarter on quarter, which is, I think, a very strong uh, evidence that the strategy that we're following is of premiumization and actually being in the league of the A category brands, it's, it's, it's working and uh, we're happy to be there. It's taken us many years of effort and commitment and, and some sacrifices, but we are, we are glad it's working out for us. And I, I don't mean to call it out, but still the YTD net sales at uh, 2292 crores uh, are 11% up uh, year on year against, as I mentioned, volume uh, of 9%. Uh, balance is coming from price premium. To a certain extent, I must acknowledge while our premium products have helped, they're also in the Q3. For about five odd weeks, uh, getting close to six weeks, uh, there was a little bit of pickup in prices uh, uh, initially in this quarter which in the second half of the quarter just disappeared, and we ended the quarter with prices going back to what they were at the end of September. But for a, for a part of the quarter, they were somewhat higher prices. They definitely helped us. Uh, they look at better realization in the quarter. Uh, EBITDA, as I mentioned, is 28% higher than previous year, and on the ITD basis, that was 390, 33% up, which is good news um, uh, given the scenario that we have in the industry. Uh, Abidda per ton at about 840 rupees um, is uh, up about 200 rupees uh, over last year and about uh, 220 rupees over the preceding quarter, uh, which is again, uh, again, helping our bottom line. The, besides the uh, slightly improved prices in part of the quarter, and also, as I mentioned, the contribution coming, uh, increasing contribution from our premium brands, the other elements which have worked in our favor are the way we have um, benefited from the waste heat recovery plants that we had set up. Uh, it is still not 100% operational, but with the 80% which we had called phase one, with that itself, which got commissioned uh, uh, during the quarter, it didn't work for a full quarter. We are actually beginning to see the benefit of uh, over four crores a per, per month, and I, th I think when we have the balance 20% power also coming, which is from creator section, the work is in advanced stages, and we should be commissioning that soon. But uh, I believe that from at least next quarter, the benefit that we see from which uh, recovery itself should be around five crores rupees per month, and a total volume that we typically end up doing about 5 lakhs or between 5 and 5 point lakh tons, it would be close to 100 rupees a ton. And then this quarter itself, uh, the wage recovery impact for the whole quarter has given us a benefit of 56 rupees a ton when the plant was neither in use for a full quarter, nor, like I said, worked at 100% capacity. Uh, and here again, if I look for the good news is that with 80% completion, what the assumed generation was, we actually are having generation from our waste recovery, which is higher than what the guaranteed generation from the vendors was. So the, what has been completed is doing well. We are quite sure that even the digital section when it's completed and commissioned soon, we will we will keep getting this uh, significant benefit that we had told the shareholders that the benefit is proving to be a little higher than what we had uh, perhaps conveyed to uh, all the analytics and shareholders. Uh, power and fuel costs, uh, they are down by 157 rupees per ton year on year, year, on year and about 87 rupees from Q2 because prices have been softening in the meantime, so the, the, the costs here. Uh, the important thing to remember here is at 1420 rupees uh, per ton that we are quoting here, it certainly has the impact of a uh, much higher proportion of OPC than we are used to. Typically, we used to have 40% OPC, now we have come to 50%. So every percentage point higher in uh, OPC consumption does mean that we are using less of additives, which means uh, there is more clinker going per ton of cement, which means uh, more fuel going into that. And uh, 
that obviously impacts our uh, our total cost. Uh, even grinding is grinding your clinker is more because when you're adding between 30, 35 percent of fly ash, obviously the grinding power and that part is so much lower. But when you're using only about four percent, which is uh, as per the standards, so then obviously your grinding costs along with the uh, the clinker making cost goes up. So that's that's pushing the per ton fuel cost slightly on the higher side, despite the fact that. Our uh, fuel uh, has actually benefited us. Our waste recovery plant is benefiting us. But still, uh, we would like to see it more competitive. With anybody who has, and thankfully, uh, when we see the results of competition, people who have who the luxury of about 80% uh, of PPC cement, obviously the power and fuel costs tend to be lower. Um, even as, uh, let's say, if we actually did apple to apple comparison and looked at our, what is my cost of producing a, one ton of OTC or one ton of PPC, I think we are still very competitive. But the product mix right now doesn't make us look the lowest power and fuel cost which we, we have had in many quarters. So this, like I mentioned, uh, currently is our compulsion. We are taking it. But as we move forward, we are hoping that this trend will change and we come back to the PPC also having a fair share in our product mix as we move forward. The other uh, initiative which we've been talking about uh, and which has helped our power and fuel costs is the, uh, our trust on the alternative fuels. And these AFRs, as all of you are aware, uh, they are nothing but the waste of uh, other industries. So with the effort that's been going on, and I think quarter after quarter, we've been increasing the percentage of uh, AFR in our fuel mix. As a result, I'm, in, I'm happy to announce that in Q3, we actually, on volumetric basis, we consumed as much as 25% of our total fuel coming from AFR. Uh, on PFR basis, it's a little bit more modest that because AFR obviously doesn't have as many calories as, as the traditional fuel has. So if you go by PFR basis, it's at 17%. We've never been in this range before. And uh, we will like to continue this trend and keep increasing the usage of AFR uh, as we go forward. Uh, not just AFR, uh, uh, the, even the, besides the waste recovery plant that I've already mentioned, the, uh, currently about 50% of our power requirement at our Jalgaon grinding unit is actually coming from solar, which is a renewable power. And uh, the further investments that we have, uh, which should be available to us in the next uh, maybe a quarter, a quarter and a half, both at Jalgaon and also at our Chittapur Karnataka plant, that will further give us more renewable power, giving us more savings. But currently, we have reached in Q3 25% of our total power consumption coming from renewables, including the SCTW and solar at Jalgaon, which should go up significantly uh, once uh, we commission the solar capacity, which is under construction at the two locations, as I mentioned. Uh, in terms of state mix, I mean, all of you do know that West is about 64% for us now. Uh, South is at 27%. It used to be closer to 30, 29. It's, it's uh, dropped a little. And the balance is being made up by the Central India, Mother Pradesh, and some markets around that. Um, always, uh, I think uh, uh, it's interesting to share uh, when we talk about, uh, on a blended basis, with so much high OPC in our system. Despite that, our in Q3, our power consumption per unit is, uh, I think, at a low of 63 units, which most of the industry players will confirm is a very, very good place to have, especially when you are selling 50% OPC. Uh, heat consumption, similarly, um, the pattern of clinker is 687. Again, it continues to be one of the best. And I'm giving you blended for the whole company. Obviously, the, the, the near Karnataka plant works at, at, at significantly better than that. So it's a blended number I'm sharing with you. Um, the fuel cost, uh, if we, if we, power cost is one element in the whole thing, uh, which is uh, coming down because of wasted recovery. Uh, although the CPP coal uh, continues to be expensive, and uh, the, when we CPP is our captive power coal, uh, despite that, we've been able to sort of uh, lower our uh, power costs. But on fuel cost, again. Uh, it's uh, down from last year on a complete power, uh, per ton cement basis, uh, which I've already given total power and fuel. Uh, in terms of coal or our fuel prices, uh, the domestic coal that we source from single nicoleries, as you know, it's a public sector body. I think there the coal prices, thankfully, in this quarter have uh, have been flattish year on year. There's no no further increase. 
uh, and also sequentially. They've, they've been a little stable now for a change. Uh, and I think that's a pressure coming with the pet coal prices have, have come down significantly. And uh, therefore, I think coal in India has to somewhere remain competitive. The pet coal cost, uh, uh, which we largely use at Chitapur, actually the cost is down by about 10% uh, over last year and about 6% uh, sequentially over the previous quarter. Uh, I, I know these questions have been coming, so I'm including that in my briefing right at the start. Uh, blended cost of fuel, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about these million kilocalories. Uh, blended includes my coal, pet coal, AFRs, whatever we are burning in our kilns. Uh, at our Telangana Devapur plant, it's been flat uh, over last year. Uh, at, uh, I'm sorry, it's flat at about 1800 uh, uh, sequentially, but it's down, including the AFR when I'm saying that, including the AFR, the blended cost is down about 12% over last year for our Devapur plant. And uh, at our Chitapur plant, uh, the, the main fuel is pet coke. Uh, there also, it's sequentially, it's uh, down about 7% and about 12% uh, lower year on year. So there is obviously the benefit of uh, AFR uh, and uh, a somewhat benign uh, uh, pricing on pet coke is, is being translated into uh, better margins for us. Uh, in terms of total fuel mix, uh, the indigenous uh, coal is about 42%, pet coke at 41%, and balance, uh, as I did mention to you, about 17%. All these are on thermal uh, substitution rate, TSR basis, 17% AFR. One pressure point for us uh, definitely has been uh, our uh, freight costs, uh, which uh, I think uh, on a per ton basis, when they look higher by about 4.5%, and also 8% QOQ, uh, Two factors. One, as I already mentioned, because of the loss of momentum in Telangana, which is our closest market, basically, when we are still sort of in a way making up for the volumes elsewhere, which are lost in Telangana over the previous previous periods, uh, it means we are having to reach out to slightly markets which are slightly farther away, more volumes in markets which are somewhat farther than what the Telangana markets are. So that is one factor. Secondly, is uh, the that uh, when I'm saying B2B projects, whether in Mumbai or in Pune area, most of that is going in bulkers. And as we know, the per ton per kilometer cost of uh, transportation of bulkers is higher. And bulk cement in quarter three for us has been as high as 40%. So that's the second uh, pressure point in terms of freight cost being higher. And the third, obviously, is uh, the typical lean season. Uh, discount that's available from railways that has not been available in QC, so that is the third factor which has impacted our freight costs. Uh, given the, I would say, withdrawal of uh, the lean season discount and also the bulker demand that the rail dispatches in this particular quarter have actually fallen from about 15% to 14%. So those are, I would say, some uh, highlights of uh, what the numbers for the quarter are. But like I said, we, we keep drawing satisfaction from the fact that our strategies of premiumization is, is working well. Uh, consumers love our product and they're willing to pay the price that we're charging for it. Uh, and also, the, in terms of, uh, I would say, the ability to sell OPC so much higher, have higher costs, but still being able to improve our bottom line is something which, again, is a part of our operating model, which uh, uh, is working well for us. Uh, so that's on the, on the operations. Uh, quick word I will also have uh, on uh, where our expansion plans are. Uh, I know uh, I'm, I'm very conscious of the fact and the number of times we talked about you know, when the capacities we put up, how they'll come down, and every time we've not been able to keep up with the date that we have announced. Uh, and largely, I have been reporting that it's been due to delays in our being able to get the necessary regulatory approvals. Uh, in this quarter, there have been significant progress on almost all the four projects, I would say, that we've been telling you about. So as we speak, uh, one of the uh, things that we have is our Chitapur plant expansion, which uh, I have been mentioning, that will be our first project to, to take up on the, for expansion. Uh, the public hearing, which is a precursor to the environment clearance, is now being scheduled, has been scheduled, the public notice has been issued for 17th of February. So on 17th of February, we'll have both the public hearings for the production capacity and also for mining. So that happens on 17th February. 
Uh, post that, obviously, the environment clearance process really picks up speed because the process before the public hearing is a lot more cumbersome that we've been through. Uh, on the Telangana Devapur plant extension line four, uh, I had been making again um, uh, a very clear, uh, let's say, communication that we would want our grinding unit to be parallelly available before we had to add more capacity at Devapur. The good news there is that you might have seen part of our release to the stock exchanges yesterday. Uh, earlier, we were not disclosing the name of the location. So today, it's official. We, it's the Madhya Pradesh State Electricity uh, Generating Company. Uh, they have uh, a power plant in Sapura uh, uh, range. And the name of the village, if you want to call it, is Sarni. So at that place, they have approved our uh, let's say proposal to put up a grinding unit on their premises, which will have, they will provide us land, they are giving us use of railway siding, and they will also be providing us fly, fly ash at a fairly competitive cost. So all those things they have approved, only one or two, I would say there are minor additions or modifications they have made in the, uh, in the other conditions in terms of uh, landed cost of fly ash. They, 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 the stipulated amount which is higher than what we had stated, and something to do with uh, space for people to live, their colony, and things like that. Uh, while they have made those changes, we are in touch with them. We're trying to, we have not accepted what they stipulated as a, as a conditional approval. We are in touch with them to basically uh, negotiate to the extent that is room available for us. Uh, which we should be able to tie up very, very soon. So um, for the first time, I'm letting you know that the new grinding unit, which is support line four at Chitapur, at Devapur, is now very close to being signed up. Because from, if I accept their conditions, it's ready now. But uh, yesterday at the board level, uh, we discussed the whole thing, and we believe there is some room for negotiation. We will be able to try our best, and post that negotiation, we'll close it and uh, get on with the activities there. So that gives me the encouragement to now come back to uh, track for Line 4 at Devapur also. Uh, again, for which the public hearing for mines has been scheduled for, uh, actually that's before, so that on 15th of February. But uh, this Sarni site means that very quickly we'll go through certain formalities, we'll close the deal with the Madhya Pradesh Electricity Limited Company, and thereafter start the process for environmental clearance for Sarni also. So that sort of ties up uh, multiple loose ends which have been hanging uh, for, uh, for quite a while. And as luck would have it, even the last fourth, I said, um, uh, expansion of capacity, Rajasthan mines for which the government orders had been passed, but the required deed was not being executed for some technical reason. That finally that deed also has. So we have a now valid signed lease deed for our Rajasthan mine also, which will now allow us to start making the acquisitions of uh, the land that we do. So that also, so all four expansion plans have gained momentum in one quarter, which is good for us because so many times we've said we'll do it, and we've not been able to deliver on the dates. Uh, exact schedule now, you know, based on how the public hearing goes in the next you know, two weeks, as I mentioned, uh, and how the files move from there, hopefully we'll be able to, I'm not announcing the exact start of the activity uh, once again and once again going wrong. In a few weeks, maybe the moment we have clarity, we'll come back to all of you uh, through whatever forum, really when exactly we'll, we'll complete the expansion plan, but all four of them are on. It's just sequencing of them, as when to start one, when to cover off one, and start the second one. Those kind of things will perhaps take a few weeks internally, and our long-term plan for that perspective is in the process. So let me firm it up a little bit and only then communicate that to you. Uh, so that's, that's good news on the, on the expansion plans. Uh, I personally don't think there's much left for me to add more to the initial briefing, so I'll uh, stop here and uh, open the floor for the questions. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment for the question queue assembled. First question is from the line of Keshav Lahoti from HDSC Securities. Please go ahead. 
Hello. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, want to get a sense about how big is Telangana market for you, B2C market overall? See, Telangana market overall, uh, uh, typically we've been given numbers, giving numbers for South India as a whole. Statewide, normally we refrain from giving, but uh, South India as a whole, for us, that's, uh, that's 30%, bulk of which comes from Telangana. Okay, understood. And as you highlighted, you know, the September to December prices are similar. How are the pricing trend in January? Uh, January, I'm sure you're talking to many other companies also. The, uh, it's a difficult time for the industry because uh, typically in the last quarter, the momentum we should have seen in January, which sets up the entire quarter very, very well. That momentum, frankly, has been missing not just in January, but December itself. And that's why I told you the YTD figures of DPIT also tell you that they so, uh, till November end, the growth was around uh, 10%, and by the time the, the quarter ended, it came down to 9%. So obviously, November was slow, sorry, December was slow. January, again, has been a little slow, and prices, as we speak, have, have actually uh, stayed at the exit levels of uh, December, I would say. Okay, understood. Uh, is it possible to give fuel costs in the terms of INR per KKL? I think I did give it free. Oh, okay, I'm just giving you the uh, movement. Uh, at Devapur, uh, on blended basis, it's, uh, uh, let me just see what much of the government will do. Sorry? Company level will also do blended. Uh, no, I'm, I'm giving you because I monitor because blended, uh, I'll, I'll rather give you plata. At, um, at Devapur, we have about 1800. And at uh, Chittapur, it's, uh, it's around, it's a little under 2000. So blended perhaps will come to uh, more uh, around a little under 1900. I don't have the state number with me, but I'm just doing a mental calculation weighted average. So we ball pack about 1900, a little less maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, got it. Uh, so last call you have highlighted that you will, you know, reach a premium share by to 25% by FY24 end. So you think is it achievable or it might be with the lag of a quarter or two? Uh, plus 25% by FY25 was always going to be difficult, but yes, we are working on that. We are already around 22% of thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So, for all you know, I mean, if, if the, uh, one of the things that needs to happen is that, see, the premium payment is all at the B2C market. And the momentum in B2C market, and if Telangana consumer market picks up and goes, I think we'll be able to hit 25, but without Telangana B2C market supporting us, it'll remain a bit of a challenge. Okay, okay, got it. Lead distance for the quarter? Uh, maybe it has gone up by about 10, 11 kilometers uh, more than what we had on an average, uh, which will be for a little over 300 that we keep saying. So that 305 may have become 315 thereabouts. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sumangal Niveshia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so, first yeah. question is, if you could share what is the net uh, cash level, I believe it could be net cash at this point, uh, as on 31st oh. March. 31st March? March is not in India. 31st December. 31st December, sorry. Okay. Uh, no, so honestly, uh, we are not keeping much uh, in, in cash form. I, I think I need to give you the debt numbers which are which have actually come down. Uh, just to sort of in a way, sorry, that, that somewhere left, got left out in my briefing. Uh, the total loan that we've had against uh, the Chittapur construction when we started that, that entire loan by now as we speak is almost liquidated completely. We had the return to 2030. As we speak today, there was there were about 37 crores left at the end of 31st December. That's that's been repaid in January itself. Okay, uh, by now it's it's already repaid. Or I think uh, we had some total borrowing as of now uh, would be perhaps more around 150 crores, and that's about it, which includes my working capital. So rather than keeping cash in hand, we have actually reduced our borrowing so that when we are going to banks. With the new expansion plans, we have a debt-free balance sheet. Understand. Understand. Got it. So any sort of volume guidance you would like to give uh, uh, for overall FI24, which now is just there for the fourth quarter and 25 huh. as well? No, I look as, as far as uh, uh, quarter four and rather FI24 is concerned. 
Uh, as you know, we've done just about 4.4 million uh, till end of uh, December. Uh, we do comfortably do about 1.8 million tons in Q4, uh, although January has not supported that, but we're still not giving up our, uh, our expectations, our hope, and our efforts. We we'll try to do more than 1.8 million, in which case we'll end up at about 6.2 or thereabouts for FI24. Right. Uh, given the current, I, I think, uh, lack of momentum, uh, it's difficult. But my own guess is that as the elections get over, uh, in Q1 we may see a little bit of election. When the election is happening at that time, demand does slow down. Uh, and. From all indications that we are seeing that there will not be any kind of uh, destabilization at the political level, national level, we believe uh, if not earlier, post-election, the momentum should pick up. And typically what we talk about, I think all, everybody in the industry would assume that the strong government is at the center without any dislocation. A growth of 10%, 11% is a given. And we're rather, we're sort of, we're rather promising anything more uh, than the rest of the industry. We should actually, if you ask me, so honestly, we should get something more because Telangana should pick up at some point in time. In which case, we might do somewhat better than the national average, but largely we'd like to stay with the, uh, not, not be behind the national average. Understood, understood. Uh, so one just last set of questions on the expansion. So we should start the land equation at Rajasthan in the couple of months once this... Uh, yes, yes. We, will, we will start because at the, like, as I told you, till you get the mining leave, you're never sure. You know, will the government you never know, take anything for granted? So that activity of land acquisition would start soon. Uh, and obviously, we'll go in phases, uh, uh, trying to acquire first the land which is needed for putting up the plant. Because that's a, you know, 18 to 21 months kind of activity to put up the plant itself. So we need to have that. Uh, and the last one I was briefing, I was saying that from the time we start uh, acquiring land till we get into some kind of a position to start the activity, the investment there would be ballpark about 100 crores for acquisition of land, acquisition of land there. Uh, and then we will keep coming back. But yes, you are right. For Rajasthan, we will we will start acquiring land. That's a time-consuming process, and we are conscious of that. Okay. And just one last question: uh, Are we looking to parallelly expand Chitrapur and Devapur, or uh, is it uh, one will kind of uh, happen first and then the second? Uh, honestly, I personally think that uh, the Taking up two tanker line at the same time may test our bandwidth. That's a very honest acknowledgement of uh, our, our size of the company. What is more perhaps likely that we will think at, and don't take this, this is the final guidance, but as, as I think about it, I think Kitapur should happen now. As I mentioned to you, there the demand is a lot more than what we can meet. Uh, my own guess is I think we should be able to start suddenly somewhere in parallel, the grinding unit for which we have clinker available at Devapur, right? And as we sort of, in a way, uh, complete with uh, the putting of the expansion project in Chitapur and Sarni, in the meantime, Devapur sometime in the middle can start. So that's how it will be a little bit of overlap, but not parallel. Understood. Got it. That, that's all from my side. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you, Sangal. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Krisha Kansara from Molecule Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, I just have two questions. Uh, you said that volumes were down in this quarter. Uh, so can you please find us on the percentage uh, loss that you saw on the volume side uh, sequentially as well as on YOI dating? The overall volume for the company? Sorry? The overall volume for the company you're asking? Correct, correct. Uh, how, uh, by how much percentage were they down in this quarter? Uh, we were down 3% uh, over last year and 2% sequentially. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, uh, second is not a question. I just want to confirm the EBITDA pertinent figure that you mentioned in your opening remarks. It was 840, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Next question is from the line of Uttam Kumar Srimal from Access Security Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. 
Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question uh, pertains to CapEx uh, guidance for FY24 and FY25. Since mostly in FY25, we will be doing uh, the expansion plan as uh, mentioned by you. So what would be our CapEx guidance and how much um, uh, data we are uh, going to take for this uh, uh, ongoing uh, coming expansion? As I did mention in my briefing, uh, I have sought some time from all of you maybe just a few weeks in which we are, we are actually preparing our own plan. Now that the clarity is emerging about the public hearing that I did, uh, just, just give us a short while. I, let me not, again, throw some number at you. Uh, if I want to have a little better query, you know, the public hearing getting completed, the files moving, and then when, it's all a function of when can I start the activity. Total, as you know, at Chitapur, our expansion costs are going to be in the ballpark in the region of 1,500 crores. That's known to us, right? What I mentioned just now was also maybe Sarni can start coming somewhere in parallel if we can get environment clearances quickly inside the power plant, so hope it should be easier. Uh, that cost would be ballpark as in about 500 crore rupees, and our grinding will cost us that much. So out of the 1500 crore Chitapur, how much will get spent in FI24 and FI25? That split is not there, but I, my guess, sorry, FI24, not, nothing is going to happen there. I'm talking more about FI25 and 26, right? in which we would like to complete Chitapur for sure and also bulk of the Sarni speed gunning unit. Total cost of 2,000 crores between FY25 and 26, the split is something I would know only when I start the actual processing. I am ready to start construction now. But Delphat is for these two projects, I think uh, my current estimate is we'll spend about 2,000 crores between the two years of FY25 and 26. Okay, and so for uh, this uh, this one, uh, uh, this grinding uh, capacity will be around uh, three million ton or two million ton. No, a grinding at Chitapur is going to be three million tons, which is integrated, which is clinker and grinding. And uh, Sarni will be a split grinding unit where we will be putting putting up a two million ton grinding unit. Okay, and so, no, sir, I am asking for Rajasthan, where we were uh, trying for no, the. Uh, Rajasthan, our current calculation tells us based on the reserves and based on you know life that we want of the plant of around 40 years plus. Uh, we, we are uh, uh, currently working on the assumption of about 3.2 million tons at Rajasthan. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. That's all for my side uh, and thank uh, all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pat Bhava, sir, from Investec. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. So thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so just, uh, so I have like two questions. Uh, so right now, uh, we can see that, you know, your share of uh, B2B sales is quite high. So can we, uh, can we, can we say that, you know, this is because of, uh, you know, the election uh, time in, in Telangana? And do we see this improving going ahead? And the B2C demand in Telangana or any other place is, uh, it's a, Basically, how is the consumer demand across industries? We've had, I, I think, um, the, because I do handle another uh, consumer company, and anybody I'm talking to any business today, consumer demand, especially in the rural and urban sector, has been very soft. The moment the rest of the economy picks up in Telangana or elsewhere, we'll start seeing more B2C demand coming. That's, that's always been the norm, right? Currently, because the B2C demand is not there, it's largely B2B spending or B2B spending, which is which is carrying the demand forward. As a result, the uh, the percentages are looking a little distorted from normal. But as the consumer demand starts picking up, our B2C business also will pick up. Okay, so this is not an uh, election phenomenon, right? Uh, election partly. Uh, one quarter can be election, right? But overall, if you look at it across India, if you've been noticing consumables, uh, whether durables or otherwise, Everybody is telling you that the consumer demand is soft. I think that's the main factor, everyone. Yeah. So that is on top of Telangana going through elections. So what would we target? Like we would bring this uh, V2B sales back to like the target would be 45%? Uh, uh, B2B, no. I'd say our ideal, ideal mix that we worked in the past is about 60% B2C and 40% or under B2B. Okay. Yeah, we are not able to go to 20-25% like some other players who, who markets are different. In the market that we operate where Maharashtra and Mumbai and Pune will remain large market, I think our sweet spot will be B2B sales being less than 40%. Okay. 
okay so sir like uh, once you know this improves like we we do expect you know we can see like some good uh, improvement on uh, power and fuel cost and freight cost right on on the back of this yes 